Welcome to Rachel's Adventures. This story is about a holiday with a difference, a couple of minor disasters, an angel in disguise, and a rescue. They say that change is as good as a holiday, and maybe they're right. We couldn't afford to have a holiday at this time, and so we hatched a plan where we swapped houses with some old friends of ours. They would get to come to our house, which was on the edge of the countryside, uh, but on a small property, and they could look after our three cats, they could explore the neighbourhood, and they could enjoy our old spa out the back. And we got to go and stay on their lifestyle property out in the Wop Wops uh, with, uh, and look after all of their animals, which we didn't know before we got there just how many they had. So we set off on Boxing Day. Now in New Zealand, Boxing Day is the day after Christmas Day and it is a public holiday and most things are shut on that day. So off we went on our merry way. We were almost at Napier, which is a city probably about 45 minutes drive from the location that we were going to um, finally get to on the lifestyle block. And about five kilometers out of Napier, suddenly the car made a weird sound and the, there was a crunching sound and suddenly the side of the car went and we stopped moving and we went uh, 4 30 p.m on boxing day is not a good time to have a breakdown <laughs> but we ended up getting a tow truck um, to come and get us and there were another, no other options we all had to pile into the cab of the tow truck and that's kind of illegal because we didn't have enough car um, seat belts uh, for for me and the children as well. You could really only fit two people beside the driver in the cab. So it kind of ended up with uh, squeezed in really tight with a child on my knee and our son kind of squeezed in behind the, the seats behind. And we didn't have to go very far. So the tow truck driver took us to the airport, um, which was about three kilometres down the road. And at the airport was the where you could get rental cars. So he duly took our car off to the mechanics in Napier and we picked up a rental car. So that was expense number one, because we weren't expecting that. Remember, we're trying to have a cheap holiday here. Uh, and so maybe sort of three hours later than what we intended, we ended up getting to the lifestyle block. Our friends showed us the the way around the property, showed us what to do with the animals. But what I hadn't been expecting was the volume of animals. So there was the normal uh, dog, there was there was some sheep, there was um, some cows. Okay, that's fairly normal for a New Zealand property. They also had a parrot, which was very annoying <laughs> and very noisy in the house and like to bite your fingers. Uh, and then they had this menagerie of ducks and chickens. And like, there was like 60 chickens and ducks. And then they had multiple other little hen enclosures um, with all these um, brooding hens with their, with their baby chickens as well. Um, and so my friends went off and left us to it. Well, we soon learnt that there is a very special order that you need to feed uh, chickens and hens. So the chickens weren't just any kind of chickens. They were like these these big, huge black chickens with red combs. And um, the man, they had an attitude. Uh, and um, once, once we got it wrong, <laughs> we fed the chickens first and then we let them out in the enclosure and then we went to go and feed the ducks and these chickens roared out of the hen house like the bats out of hell <laughs> and raced for the chickens and booted them out of the way and um, uh, ate all their food and um, it was actually kind of scary sort of standing there in the midst of these like these black chickens running towards you madly <laughs> so um and we decided that we'd better get a routine and we'd better work out 
how to make sure that the ducks got to eat as well or we weren't going to survive very long. <laughs> um, the other thing that happened was that um, our friends said, oh yeah, one of the sheep, it's a bit sick. Oh, and we've given it some antibiotics, but oh, don't worry about the other dose of antibiotics. Anybody who knows anything about animals is you don't stop antibiotics halfway through a treatment of um, course of treatment so um, unfortunately the sheep died the next day and so the first big job my husband had to do was to try and bury the sheep uh, in rock hard ground because it was summertime and the earth had got really really hard so that was that was the next fun thing <laughs> So once we'd sort of worked out the ropes, we'd worked out how to, how to handle all the animals on this property, then we went out and explored, and um, and that was lots of fun. We went to Castle uh, Point, uh, which is the most amazing sculpted, wind-sculpted um, sandstone uh, location, uh, and we went to uh, Mount Bruce, uh, which is a bird sanctuary, where <laughs> the carcass was very naughty and they were really close to stealing my daughter's food. So then we needed to go to Napier to pick up the car from the mechanics. We had a lovely day in Napier, we went for our cycles around the waterfront, we ate ice creams on the waterfront as you do and then we were tired, we were ready to go back to the place we were staying and because we had the evening feed to do with all those marauding animals. <laughs> And we're about five minutes out of um, the last decent sized town when suddenly the car goes thunk again. And we were just like, but, but we've just been at the mechanics. What on earth is going on? And it, and it was just grinding, this horrible grinding noise. And, and there was nothing we could do. We had to stop. So we got out of the car and we discovered there was no signal. There was no cell phone signal. There was only one house and we went to go and talk to those people and they said, no, not interested, we're about to go out. And we went, what on earth are we going to do? We're out in the countryside, it's after 5 p.m. on New Year's Eve, everybody is at a party. <laughs> and, um, and so I just went, you know what, I will just stand on the side of the road and I'll start praying because we need a miracle. And a miracle came. Our, a miracle arrived in a little bit of a different manner than what I was expecting. The tow truck driver who eventually turned up was gap-toothed and disheveled, but despite his appearances, he had a heart of gold. He piled us all into the car, into the cab, again, we were illegal, we didn't have the right um, seat belts. He drove us into town, he found the last uh, unbooked room um, accommodation in the town, because of course it was New Year's Eve and everybody was there for New Year's Eve celebrations and there was all sorts of events on as well. He then dropped me off there to get the children all sorted out. He took my husband to the car yard, and I'm talking about a car yard with all sorts of broken down cars. He went and dragged the mechanic out of his New Year's party, and the guy was half drunk by that point. They came back and they hunted um, for what was the problem with the car. And what they discovered was that earlier in the day, when we picked up the car, those mechanics had failed to put a, a key bolt into the wheel hub and um, to hold our wheel in place. <laughs> and, um, and that's why the car had collapsed again. So instead of um, having to order parts, they went and they hunted through all the broken down cars in the car yard. They found the exact right bolt that they needed. They put it in place and sent my husband on his way. And to me, that was a miracle. It was a miracle I needed in that situation. And we ended up 
finding that there was a this amazing light display, light party that was happening uh, next to the accommodation we were in and we were able to go and have the most amazing experience and wonderful night uh, where they had lights uh, moving to music. It was fantastic. So at the end of the day, what I realised was that sometimes we can have these mir miracles happen. We can get rescued by people who are totally unexpected and we should never judge a book by its cover. <laughs>